Hi first grade, so I just wanted to make this little intro before our video today just to kind of address that I know that it's very stressful at home right now and that everyone is doing their best with distance learning. We are too and as much as we want to try and have live virtual teaching happen, it's pretty hard to do it when all three of us first grade teachers have young babies at home so again we're going to try our best to meet your needs we're gonna try and ump up the amount of videos that we're making but also just be patient with us because it takes a it takes some time to make these videos and produce them for you but you know we are extremely dedicated and really want to provide the same quality learning that you would at home through distance learning even though this is completely new to us it's a learning curve for everyone so again we just appreciate all that you're doing at home right now we just want you to be safe and we can't wait to see you again we love you so much and miss you so again just wanted to say that before we started our lesson today another thing I wanted to um, say before we launched into our video for today is that we are going to be depending heavily on you not just watching the videos but engaging and engaging with them so if we are doing a math routine then we really want you to be doing that math routine with us if we're doing a reading lesson just like how we are for this video today if i'm asking questions during the video then i'm hoping that you're actually thinking about them and working on your comprehension for that so again just really engage with the videos because that's the only way that this is going to work okay readers so today we're going to be doing a reading workshop lesson with one of the books from our favorite series mr putter and tabby now before we start our lesson i want you to think about one of our favorite movies that we might have seen this past year how many of you saw the latest Toy Story movie? A lot of you? I thought so. Now I know I couldn't see all your hands shoot up in the air, but I know that a lot of you did just because you were so excited to come to school and talk about it. There were so many of you having conversations about making forkies with our sporks from breakfast in the classroom, so I knew you saw it. Now, when you think of a movie like Toy Story 4, your mind might have instantly gone to characters like Woody, Forky, Buzz Lightyear, but there are other characters too. Can you take a few seconds to think, readers, about who are some of the other characters in that series? Who else do you get to meet in this series of Toy Story? Take a few more seconds. Remember, think, who else do you get to meet in that movie? Okay, three, two, one. Now, I know I couldn't hear you, but give me a thumbs up if maybe you thought of Jesse. If maybe you thought about the Potato Heads, Mr. Potato Head and Mrs. Potato Head. Maybe your mind went to Bo Peep because she came back in Toy Story 4 even though she left in Toy Story 2 that was a big big part of that movie having Woody go with Bo Peep at the end I'm sorry if I spoiled it but I don't think I did for that many of you when you watch Toy Story 4 you don't just meet Woody you meet a whole bunch of other characters and to be honest readers you'll never really know Woody without also learning about his friends after all, there are other characters in other series that are just like that too. Like, when you think about Winnie the Pooh, you, you don't just think about Winnie the Pooh, you also think about Piglet and maybe Tigger. And when you think about other movies like Shrek, your mind doesn't just go to Shrek, your mind probably also goes to Princess Fiona and Donkey. We can't talk about Anna without thinking about... That's right, readers, Elsa! And Olaf. So you see, for us to get to really know a character, it's important for us to pay attention to the other characters in the story too. So, 
Today I want to teach you. The readers don't just get to know the characters who are the main stars in a story. They also get to know the other characters too. When you learn about the other characters, you end up knowing the main character even more. So before we get really deep into our lesson today, let's read the first chapter of our book, Mr. Putter and Tabby Run the Race by Cynthia Ryland and Arthur Howard. But as we're reading, think about maybe who the characters are in our book so far. Who are we meeting in this series? Ready? Mr. Putter and Tabby Run the Race by Cynthia Ryland and Arthur Howard. Mr. Putter and Tabby Run the Race. Cynthia Ryland, Mr. Putter and Tabby Run the Race, illustrated by Arthur Howard. For Eamon Johnson, who runs a good race. Chapter 1, Find Your Sneakers. Chapter 2, Toes and Tea. Chapter 3, Seniors. Chapter 4, The Race. Chapter 5, Perfect Prizes. Chapter 1, Find Your Sneakers. It was April. Mr. Putter and his fine cat Tabby were full of April energy. They always got extra energy in April. Flowers were blooming, birds were singing, showers were showering. April! Mr. Putter and Tabby felt it. Mrs. Teaberry next door must have felt it too. She called Mr. Putter one April morning. There's a race, she said. A race? asked Mr. Putter. A marathon, said Mrs. Teaberry. Uh-oh, thought Mr. Putter. He was sure Mrs. Teaberry was going to ask him to run the race with her. Will you run the race with me? He was right, readers, asked Mrs. Teaberry. Mr. Putter gave Tabby more cream. Aren't we too old to run a race? asked Mr. Putter. It's a senior marathon, said Mrs. Teaberry. Nothing but old people. Mr. Putter gave Tabby another biscuit. I have not run anywhere in 30 years, said Mr. Putter. I don't think I remember how to run. There are prizes, said Mrs. Teaberry. Prizes, asked Mr. Putter. Mr. Putter loved prizes. One is a train set said Mrs. Teaberry. Really? asked Mr. Putter. With lights and switches and tunnels, said Mrs. Teaberry. Really? asked Mr. Putter again. The train said is second prize, Mrs. Teaberry said. Mr. Putter could not imagine a train set being second prize. It should be first. What is first prize? asked Mr. Putter. Golf clubs, said Mrs. Teaberry. Mr. Putter did not play golf. He had tried once, but he and Tabby kept getting lost. Mr. Putter did not want golf clubs. I want the train set, said Mr. Putter. I knew you would, said Mrs. Teaberry. Find your sneakers. So readers, after reading chapter one, think who were the characters that we met in that chapter? We, of course, had Mr. Putter. He's the star of this series, along with his fine cat, Tabby. But who were the other characters that we were introduced to in this book? That's right, there was Mrs. Teaberry. And, and the other Mr. Putter and Tabby books, we also... Oh, yeah, that's right, yes. Her good dog, Zeke. Do you see him on this page, readers? We also got introduced to him in the illustrations. So, let's think. So far, we know about Mrs. Teaberry and Zeke being other characters in this book. We have to pay attention to the other characters in this book, too. So, as we're reading the other chapters in this book, we cannot forget to stop paying attention to the other characters. Because if we really want to get to know... Mr. Putter and Tabby, who are the main stars in this series, we have to make sure to constantly stay focused on who the other characters are too. So, so 
Let's start reading again. Chapter 2. Toes and Teeth. Mr. Putter started training for the marathon. It was not easy. It took him four days just to find his sneakers. Then he had to work out. Mr. Putter did not want to work out. He wanted to eat muffins with Tabby. Hmm. Let's stop here and think, readers. So far, what do we know about Mr. Putter? Well, from the first chapter, we learn he loves train sets. I think, readers, and you might disagree with me, that Mr. Putter is also a character who's a little bit nervous. Because do you remember when Mrs. Teaberry was telling him about the marathon, he kind of kept giving cat, sorry, giving his cat Tabby some treats. He gave him some cream and also another biscuit. It seemed to me as if when he was doing that, he was really thinking about whether or not he should actually do the marathon. To me, he seemed a little bit nervous about it. But then again, when Mrs. Teaberry told him about the train set being the second prize, he also was really motivated to run the marathon. So again, that's just what I learned about Mr. Potter from reading that first chapter. And I'm sure that as I'm reading more and more, I'll get to know not just more details about who Mr. Putter is as a character, but the other characters in the book too. Ready? But he knew that Mrs. Teaberry was working out because sometimes her good dog Zeke ran by with a jump rope in his mouth. When Zeke wanted to play, he took things and ran. So Mr. Putter had to work out too. He decided he would touch his toes 30 times every day to make up for the 30 years he'd forgotten to run. The first time Mr. Putter tried to touch his toes, he could not reach them. He touched his knees instead. So you see, readers, that's another source of information for me to kind of support my inference that Mr. Putter is really motivated. He's not just motivated because he knows Mrs. Teaberry's working out. He's also motivated to do his best. Did you see that part in the book where it says that he wants to make up for the 30 years he, he had forgotten to run, that shows me that he's a character who's really motivated to do his best. He touched his knees twice, and then he had a cup of tea with Tabby. The next time Mr. Putter tried to touch his toes, he tried 10 times, and he never got there. But he enjoyed his tea with Tabby very much, and he decided knees were just fine. Zeke kept running by with his jump rope. Mr. Putter kept touching his knees, and Tabby had lots of tea. Things were going great. Oh, readers, he looks exhausted. Do you see how he's just slumped over? Chapter 3, Seniors. Now, readers, in the illustration for this chapter, I see Mrs. Teaberry, so I'm sure that we're going to be learning more information about Mrs. T. Berry and Zeke. So we have to remember to pay close attention to what the other characters are doing. Are you ready, readers? Okay. Chapter 3, Seniors. It was finally the day of the senior marathon. Mrs. T. Berry and Zeke were very excited. Mrs. T. Berry had made special outfits for both of them. Zeke still had a jump rope in his mouth. Zeke had become very attached to his jump rope. Aw, oh, readers, that's really sweet of Mrs. Teaberry. I'm learning about Mrs. Teaberry that she's a very thoughtful character. Did you hear what Mrs. Teaberry did for both her and Mr. Putter? She made matching outfits, or sorry, special outfits for both of them. I'm not sure if they're matching just yet, but she is definitely matching with Zeke. She must be very motivated, too. She's also seeming to me like an excited character. She seems excited about running the marathon. They all drove the race. When they arrived, they saw many seniors lining up to run. Zeke and Tabby got settled on top of the car. Mr. Potter and Mrs. Teaberry got settled near the starting line. 
I didn't know there were this many old people, said Mr. Putter. Oh, we're everywhere, said Mrs. Teaberry. Mr. Putter looked around. He saw a lot of old people touching their toes. Uh-oh, thought Mr. Putter. Hmm. Readers, let's take a moment to think maybe about not just what Mr. Putter meant and his feeling when he said, oh, oh, but also thinking about maybe what Mrs. Teaberry might say to Mr. Putter. Take a few seconds to think. Get ready to check your thinking on the next few pages. Ready? Everyone got in line. I hope you win that train set, said Mrs. Teaberry. I hope you come in first, said Mr. Putter. Hmm. Readers? I'm thinking that Mrs. Teaberry noticed how Mr. Putter was feeling, and so she wanted to motivate him to calm him down a little bit because maybe she knew that he was feeling a little bit nervous about running a marathon when the other seniors looked to be more ready. So she told him, I hope you win that train set. She really wants him to do his best. And listen to what he said to her. I hope you come in first, said Mr. Putter. I think she's a very good friend. Not only does she always want to do things with Mr. Putter, she always wants to support him as well. I think Mrs. Teaberry is also trying to cheer him up on this page. She's trying to get him to calm down, do his best. That tells me a lot about their friendship. It tells me a lot about who the characters are in this book, that they support each other. And again, I am learning that, not just by paying attention to Mr. Putter, but by thinking about his relationship with the other characters in this book, like Mrs. Teaberry. The horn sounded, and the seniors started running. Chapter 4, The Race Everybody passed Mr. Putter, except, oh sorry, everybody except two people. Two people who tripped and fell and never got up, but everybody else passed Mr. Putter. Mrs. Teaberry was way out in front. Mr. Putter was way behind. But readers, he's not giving up. Look at him go. He's not giving up. He wants to do his best. Tabby was asleep, and Zeke had a jump rope in his mouth and wanted to play. That's when the race took a turn. I wonder what might happen on the next page, readers. I wonder what that turn might be. Do you think you know? Can you make a prediction, readers, as to what might happen next? Okay, let's check our thinking. Ready? Suddenly, there was confusion. Look at all their faces, readers. Look at all the faces on the characters in the illustrations. They are confused as to what's happening. A dog with a jumper was running the race. All of the seniors tried to pass him. They started bumping into one another. Some of them got bumped right off the road. Some of them stopped running and started arguing. More of them tripped. But one of them wanted a train set so badly that he ran right past everybody and grabbed hold of that jump rope and held on for dear life. Zeke finally had someone to play with. Zeke was so happy he ran even faster. This made Mr. Putter run even faster. Mr. Putter did not let go. He wanted that train set. He passed one runner after another, after another, after another. Then he passed Mrs. Teaberry. And then he won the race. Everybody cheered. Everybody, er, sorry, readers. Everyone clapped. Everyone was happy. Everyone that is except Mr. Putter. He had just won a set of golf, 
of golf clubs that had no lights and no switches and no tunnels. Phooey, thought Mr. Putter. He does look extremely disappointed. Chapter 5, Perfect Prizes But things worked out after all, because who came in second? Mrs. Teaberry. So she and Mr. Putter swapped prizes. Mrs. Teaberry took her golf clubs home, and Mr. Putter took home the best train set he had ever seen in his life. Now, readers, this tells me a lot about their friendship. I thought the words they exchanged just before the race told me a lot about who they were as friends and how close they were, but this tells me even more. The fact that Mrs. Teaberry really wanted to make Mr. Putter happy and knew that he would be even happier if they swapped prizes lets me know that she is a very considerate character. The fact that she wasn't upset about losing the race, even though she trained so hard and was just excited for Mr. Putter because he won, that tells me a lot about their relationship and their friendship. And for the rest of April, Mrs. Teaberry and Zeke came back from the golf course and went straight to Mr. Putter's house to watch his trains. Mr. Putter had a train hat. Mrs. Teaberry had a golf hat. Zeke had a jump rope. Tabby had a nap. And things worked out perfectly. So readers, now it's your turn. So even though we can't have a reading workshop as a class, I want you to get one of your chapter books that you hopefully took home and find a place in your book when you can, sorry, where you can start reading or rereading and be sure to pay extra attention to the relationships your main character has with the other characters in your book. Notice not just how they interact with each other but also pay attention to the words they say to each other and the things that they do together and for one another because that's going to help you get to know both your characters or lots of your characters even better. Remember you can learn about the characters not just by reading about them but also studying the pictures because that's what we did in this book. Look closely to learn even more about their relationships. Think, how are the characters interacting with one another? What are their expressions? What might be their feelings? What might be going through their head? Because all of these details can help you learn more and more about your characters. So, again readers, don't forget that you can't learn about a main character in a book without learning about the other characters too. You already know the characters are some of the most important parts of a story, of any story. But also, always remember that it's not just the main character who matters, the other characters matter too. The relationships that the main character has with the other characters matter just as much. So here's my tip for you. When you're trying to get to know the relationships among the other characters in the story, you have to. Pay attention to the clues that are in your book. Those clues might just be in the pictures. They might also be in the words. But you also have to think, think, think about where are other parts in your reading that are going to help you learn more and more. It can be down to the very details that you might not notice the first time you read your book, which is why it's a great idea to always reread your books. And don't forget, today and every day, Remember that when you are reading, you have to pay attention to the other characters in your book too if you want to get to learn more about your character. Okay. Thank you for reading with me today and I can't wait to work with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.